Good afternoon and welcome to ISTV English News. First, the headline. Government of India's interlocutor R.N. Ravi arrives at Imphal to talk with the Chief Minister, representatives of Amuko and UCM. Hello, I'm Gabby Goldman. Now let's see the news in detail. Interlocutor of Government of India in peace talks with the NSCNIM, RN Ravi, arrived at Imphal today. He arrived around 11.45 a.m. at the Imphal airport. He told media persons at the airport that discussions will be held with different sections of the society in trying to bring a comprehensive peace accord. It is a step taken up to bring inclusive peace, he said. I don't know what is said, I can't make out, because the peace has to be for everyone. Okay. And it is inclusive, we have made it very clear, it is inclusive, we will consult everyone, we will take everyone's views on board, and we will try to reach a comprehensive peace. It is not just uh, with one or the other. No, no, it is not. RN Ravi is scheduled to meet the Chief Minister of Manipur, Okram Ibobi, and other ministers in connection with the peace accord signed between him and the NSNIM on August 3. Though it is not known what the interlocutor might bring up for talks with the state government, it is believed that the state government will convey to him the resolutions adopted by the Manipur Legislative Assembly in the past and the latest one having been taken on August 31 to the effect that the territorial boundary, social integrity as well as the administrative setup of the state cannot be compromised in any manner whatsoever. The resolution had stated that the peace accord between the government of India and the NSNIM is welcome, but the accord must not in any manner infringe upon the state's boundary and administrative setup affecting the unity and integrity of the people of the state. On the other hand, it is learned that Centre's interlocutor RN Ravi is scheduled to meet the leaders of the two apex civil society organizations of Manipur, namely All Manipur United Clubs Organization Amuko and United Committee Manipur UCM, and talk about the steps being taken by the government of India to bring a final settlement on the political demands of the NSNIM. In this regard, the leaders of the two CSOs had held a joint meeting and discussed the matter, it is learned. The meeting between the CSOs and RN Ravi is slated to be held at 3.30 p.m. at the Hotel Classic. It is expected that the leaders of the two CSOs will clearly illustrate how Manipur came into being several thousands of years ago and became a state of the Indian Union. They would remind the government of India through the interlocutor that different communities have been living together in Manipur with love and peace, just like brothers and sisters of the same family since times immemorial. Nothing can snap this over several thousand years old bond just to please a handful of Naga rebels led by Isaac T.C. Su and Th. Muiva. The CSO leaders are expected to insist. BJP Yuba Mocha is going to organize a marathon run carrying the message of Make in India, Make in Manipur on October 4 in Imphal. The marathon run will start from the office of the BJP at Itaipa to take and pass through different places in the city for about 10 kilometers. Both male and female will participate in the run, announced the president of BJYMO Malesh. I'm ready. Taylor Row. Any other car late? Some say it was put it perfectly straight. Ado kangkar ka under the freezy. Relax. Perfectly straight. Aina say me ano bosan sil perfectly straight with straight lock technology maramdi. Some kangkar ba matung dasu align straight o ina line bagi dama. Wow. Hujik su straight o ina. Straight and gorgeous. Sunset perfect straight. Lock to view. Rock to view. The election commission has announced the dates for the much-awaited assembly elections for 243 seats in Bihar. Addressing a press conference in the national capital, Chief Election Commissioner Nassim Zaidi announced that the polling would be conducted in five phases in state, polling for which would begin on October 12. The second, third, fourth and fifth phases of polling will be held on October 16, 28, November 1 and November 5 respectively. The counting of votes will take place on November 8.
As many as 49 seats would go to polls in the first phase, while 32 constituencies would vote in the second phase of the assembly elections. The third, fourth and fifth phase of the elections will be fought in 50, 55 and 57 seats respectively. Slamming the Congress for disrupting Parliament, Prime Minister Narendra Modi today said that all parties were in favor of bringing in economic reforms through goods and services tax bill, but it was only the Congress which is barricading the passage of the bill in Parliament. We had hoped Congress would work with us, help the Parliament enforce reforms, but the party just doesn't want to work with us, he said. Modi also alleged that Congress is avoiding dialogues on important social issues. A day after Congress President Sonia Gandhi called Modi a Hawabaz, the Prime Minister hit back at her saying the Hawalabaz are putting roadblocks on the country's growth. Taking a big at Congress, Modi also said that the party, which was once in a majority, has been reduced to nearly 40 seats in Lok Sabha today. To those who have been rejected by the people, I appeal to them for the pride of democracy to fend economic dangers work with us, he said. Every political group must leave no stone unturned in order to meet the public expectations if they win and to introspect if they are defeated, he asserted. We faced a defeat in 1984. We introspected and tried to learn from that defeat, but we didn't criticize others and corrected our mistakes instead. Today the nation has given us a majority in Lok Sabha, he added. There was a time when the BJP had only two MPs in Parliament. The then Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi made fun of BJP in Parliament and we had to listen to it, Modi recalled. Modi was speaking at the inaugural event of the 10th three-day World Hindi Conference in Bhopal. Widespread flooding and landslides in northeast Japan have forced more than 90,000 people to abandon their homes. The city of Joso, north of the capital Tokyo, was hit by a wall of water after the Kinugawa River burst its banks. Helicopter rescue teams have been plucking people from rooftops. One person has been reported missing in the region and at least 12 are injured. The rains come after... A day after, Typhoon Itau brought winds of up to 125 kilometers per hour, that is 78 miles per hour, to central Aiki Prefecture. This is a scale of downpour that we have not experienced before. Grave danger could be imminent, the chief forecaster at the Japan Meteorological Agency, JMA Takuya Deshimaru, told an emergency press conference earlier on Thursday. Entire homes and cars were carried away on the torrent as the Kinugawa River burst its banks after two days of heavy rainfall. Before we wrap up the headline once again, Government of India's interlocutor R.N. Ravi arrives at Imphal to talk with Chief Minister, representatives of Amuko and UCM. That's all we have for now. We'll be back with more updates.